So basically my entire altar is on the floor right now because I'm in the middle of doing um, a bit of a spring clean. I'm kind of taking everything off, giving it a dust, just giving it a bit of a refresh. And it kind of got me thinking about what I do to keep my spiritual practice fresh. So I have the altar set up again, as you can see, and doing this kind of made me laugh because I realized how many times I have dismantled and put back together this exact altar. I don't know how many times in a row now I have taken everything off, put it back on, and not changed so much as the color of the dinner candles at the back. And it kind of made me wonder about the state of my spiritual practice right now. And I actually constructed this particular altar, this type, you know, this kind of design of altar, um, I think about two years ago as a move to get myself out of a spiritual slump. And it did help with that and it's still helping with that. And I definitely feel like I'm back on track with regards to my spirituality in a, in a large way. But I still have been feeling a little bit like maybe there's more room for experimentation and novelty and reading more and thinking more about different kinds of practices. I mean, there's a lot to be said for familiarity, I think, in the spiritual practice and doing something repeatedly and making it a ritual in the sense of it actually being the same every time and coming around, uh, you know, at each uh, celebration on the wheel of the year and doing the same thing every year. You know, there can be a kind of satisfying cyclical feel to that. And I think we can really kind of, uh, really sort of relax into a ritual that we're familiar with when we know the words off by heart and things like that. I think that functions on a different way than when you're constantly working with new material. But at the same time, I have been working with really any new material in a really long time now, uh, whether it's with the altar or with my ritual plan or anything. So I had an idea why I was putting this altar back together. I thought, you know, what if I committed to spending the next 12 months doing some new spiritual practice on a daily basis? So trying to make time in my life for a little bit more time spent at the altar. And I don't want to get too extravagant with this. I'm thinking something that I can be, that I can do in like 50, 10 to 15 minutes maybe, or even five minutes at a push if I'm like really stuck for time. Just something that I can incorporate, like I've incorporated my meditation practice into my daily routine. Uh, maybe not in the morning, maybe more in the evening or something like that, or just at some point during the day, preferably in the evening. I used to have um, an evening practice um, for two reasons. I mean, firstly, to actually bring about a little bit more of a sense of devotion into my daily or everyday life, um, but also, you know, really to uh, get excited again about new forms of spiritual practice. And that's why I don't want to just commit to one thing that I could do every day for the next 12 months in the evening. I want to mix it up. I want to give myself uh, a reason to read books that I have. I want to mix it up. I want to give myself an excuse to be reading books that I already have or that I haven't read yet, uh, to be exploring different kinds of practices and different things that different people do as a kind of daily spiritual practice or even as part of ritual. And, you know, I just want to kind of give myself uh, a way to reignite that excitement and passion in reading about different kinds of practices and in trying new things and seeing how how they work for me. And then if some of them work really well, if I really enjoy some of them, I might inc incorporate them on a long-term basis, on rotation, the ones that I don't enjoy so much that I don't have to go back to, but rather than just finding new things that I can do on a regular basis, like new things that I can incorporate into my long-term plan, mostly I really just want to get into the habit of trying new things again and get into the habit of um, incorporating that kind of exploratory sense into my daily routine, I suppose. So um, I'm gonna start this on the 1st of May. So that gives me a couple of weeks to go away and plan. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find time to do that and come back and record again once I've figured out what I'm gonna do for the next 12 months and let you know. And then in the future, I can kind of check back in, keep myself accountable and let you know how it goes. So yeah. 
So it's been about two weeks and I finally today had the chance to sit down and think about uh, what I might do in my practice over the next kind of six to 12 months in order to incorporate this sense of kind of newness and novelty and variety into my practice. And I've decided that I want to kind of coincide this novelty seeking mission in my spiritual practice with a desire I've had for a while now to go back to having like an evening routine. Actually, I say go back, but I don't think I've ever had a really solid regular evening routine apart from maybe when I was doing yoga every day in the evening, but it was quite early on in the evening. I've never had like a, a winding down ritual before bed. And I mean, apart from maybe like reading before I go to sleep, um, I think, and like I do tend to kind of watch a bit of Netflix or some YouTube videos or something before I go to bed and read. So um, I don't know, I, I feel a bit like there's kind of wasted hours maybe in the evening that I lose to just, I don't know, procrastinating around the house. Um, I do chores a lot in the evening, which is important, but at the same time, I feel like I could maybe be a little bit, uh, a little bit more mindful about how much time I'm spending doing those kinds of things and just wrapping up my day a little bit sooner. So what I'm gonna try and do is, at least on the evenings when I'm actually at home at that time, which will be, I mean, probably realistically, hopefully about four to five days per week. So, I mean, there's, there's a strong chance for me to get, say, like four solid evenings a week where I can be here at, say, 8.30 p.m. maybe, um, because I, I still want to kind of maintain the rest of my wind down routine from like nine or half nine, just to kind of watch something, read something, get myself to bed nice and early. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate some of the things that I was hoping to do in my morning routine or that I used to be doing in my morning routine, but that kind of got pushed out uh, because of the meditation. I talked a little bit about that in my uh, meditation video that I uploaded a couple of weeks back. I, um, I used to, well, I tried to cultivate a habit of, um, I lined up these books on the table next to my desk. And my idea was that I would reach for one of those books in the morning while I was eating my breakfast and read a little bit and then journal a little bit. But all of that was taking like an extra kind of half hour in the morning that I don't necessarily need. And I just wanted to prioritize yoga, meditation and running. And if I added in that, you know, we were looking at like a four hour morning routine, which is just getting a little bit out of hand, frankly. So yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate going to the book, sitting down at the desk in the evening. So, you know, whether I've just come home or I'm finishing up for the day, like once it hits half past eight, I have to shut everything down that I'm doing, no matter what it is that I'm working on, whether it's like PhD work or that I'm editing a video, just stop for the evening, power down, and then um, get that time to sit at the desk, reach for a book, uh, and I think the way I'm gonna do it is um, I had originally planned to just sort of feel out like what book I might want to read for, from and think of a specific chapter or something like that. But like, I, I think I was expecting myself to spend too much time, like to read an entire chapter, you know, it takes a little bit of time. So I think instead I'm gonna do a sort of bibliomancy type routine. So not like using it for divination necessarily, but to choose a passage pretty much at random from one of those books and use that as kind of a prompt for journaling. And I do want to kind of maybe incorporate a gratitude aspect into my journaling in the evening and like a couple of other things like that, but like I want it to be quite free flowing. Um, but yeah, like maybe based on whatever whatever passage it is that I've picked at random from these books. So I'll kind of pick whatever book just feels right for me, you know, run through, pick a passage kind of at random as I would. I mean, I, I've done bibliomancy for people for kind of fun before and as I would maybe choose tarot cards, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna do all that, do my journaling, and then I'm gonna spend some time at the altar doing something that I would not normally do in my practice. So something that I don't normally do like in regards to meditation in the morning or as part of a ritual that I would do kind of every six weeks uh, for like, you know, a celebration of, on the wheel of the year. So I've got kind of a rough list of things that I'm gonna work with. And like some of them are quite vague still. And even the one that I've written down for May is still a little bit vague, but you know, I think I'll figure it out as I go. Maybe not that vague. And I'm gonna start with something that is actually pushing me like a little bit out of my comfort zone. It is something that I did before. Like I did go through a phase of for a few months, I think doing this pretty much every day as part of a kind of morning routine, I think when I was meditating in the morning and in the evenings, this is something that I incorporated in the mornings. 
Um, but yeah, I would like to maybe try it again. And it is um, going through the chakras and uh, doing kind of chakra chants. So I can't remember off the top of my head what they all are, but it's like basically different Aum sounds, but with a different consonant at the beginning of, uh, of each, depending on what chakra that you are kind of working with. And I had a lot of success with this before. Now I don't, I don't, hmm, I'm not an adherent of the sort of energetic model within paganism or alternative spirituality. So I don't really believe in a, like a energetic body or anything like that. I'm very much a monist. So the chakras for me are more metaphorical than anything else, which is why I kind of don't work with them a whole lot. And it's very much out of my comfort zone. But um, I just found it to be like a really useful thing to do in order to tune into my body. And um, I actually quite liked the experience and how it made me feel to kind of act as though I believed in an energetic energetic body. So kind of almost using belief as a tool in, in a way. Um, and sort of, I, I found that it just made me feel more connected to divinity. And uh, it just kind of brought out a different kind of way of thinking, I think, in me about my body and myself and the connectedness between my body and everything else. So I'm going to be really curious to see how that goes and to see if I, it has like a similar effect again. Uh, so that's what I'm going to start with for May. And I'm going to endeavour to do that, you know, as often as I can in May. Actually, for the first two weeks, I'm going to be in Ireland. So I won't be out as often in the evenings, probably. So I might even manage like, you know, six days a week even. Um, yeah. And then I've decided that I'm only going to plan out the next five months after that because honestly thinking about what I might want to do for this for the next 12 months was really overwhelming and I just had no idea like I'm going to be moving back to Ireland in September so beyond that like I just I don't know what my life is going to look like so I decided just to plan out until kind of the end of October so what I have if I'm looking down it's because I'm looking at the list um, so what I have for June, I also needed something for June that I could do in Ireland because I'm going to be in Ireland for a few weeks in June as well. So it couldn't be something that would require tools on my altar. And what I decided to do was what, to work with a tarot deck. So I'm going to work with the tarot deck, um, the, the Mary L tarot, because it's a deck that I really, really love, but it seems to be requiring a lot of prior work with it for me to actually work with it effectively in a spread. So what I want to do is take a card do you know, I might actually take two or three cards every day con considering like I'm only going to get through half the deck if I only do one card per day or less actually if I'm not even doing this every day of the week. Hmm, okay, I need to think about that one a little bit more but I want to meditate on like, maybe three cards each time of the Mariel Tarot in an effort to kind of work through the entire deck and yeah, and see how that goes. Then in July I have, all I have written down is chakras with crystals it may not be chakras again, it might be something else, but I want to do something with crystals because I used to, to kind of use crystals at the altar a bit. I used to hold them um, and just kind of, again, I don't, because I'm not kind of buying into the energetic model, my ideas about uh, crystals. I made a whole video about this actually, so I'll, I'll link that hopefully. Um, so my idea of how crystals work is, work is very much uh, kind of symbolic more than kind of a literal energy. Um, but I really, really enjoy doing that. Again, like it, it worked for me. It, it, I felt it made a difference in me. Uh, so I want to maybe do that. Again, the chakras are just a handy way of just having a, a different set of parts of you and then parts of, because obviously the chakras are associated with kind of different parts of your life and different kind of um, yeah, modes of being. So I think it's a very handy way of like working through all the different parts of yourself as well. So I think I might go ahead with that, but if I think of something other, you know, some other way to work with crystals, I might do that. Uh, and that's something that I can do, you know, I need to do that here in July because I'm going to be here for all of July and I have all the crystals that I'm going to need. So uh, the crystals I'll use for that will probably be the large ones that I have on my altar uh, for the kind of wheel of the year because there are uh, there's like like eight of them basically on the altar that I can choose to work with and they're quite quite you know substantially large and I just I really I really like holding them and I just don't do that anymore um, if you're wondering about that on, on my altar I'm actually going to be uploading a video soon probably next week on of an altar tour so keep an eye out for that uh, then in August I am going to work with my singing bowl again if you want to know more about 
that. Uh, I will talk about that in my altar tour. Uh, but yeah, I don't use my singing bowl as much as I would like to, so um, I would like to just get in the habit of, of using it uh, extensively every day for a month. So that's what I'm gonna do in August. Again, I will be here with my entire altar set up for pretty much all of August. Um, September is a more kind of uh, kind of month. I'm gonna be moving back to Ireland. My altar will be, you know, in transit and stuff for a while. Uh, so what I have for that is libation slash tea ceremony. So that's something I'm gonna to have to think about more about how I'm gonna kind of do that. I really like the idea of working with like pouring liquids and tea and uh, kind of any sort of like that kind of libation type ceremony. I went through a phase of doing that, of pouring just hot water actually from a teapot into two mugs and then I think one of them was for me and one of them was just as a kind of an offering and I just really loved doing that uh, but I could never kind of figure out a way that made sense to me logically that fit in with my practice. So that's something I'm really looking forward to playing with a bit and just seeing if I can even incorporate it into my daily life on an ongoing basis because it's something that doesn't have to take a long time to do. It's something that I can do as part of my you know, morning or evening uh, that literally I can just make the, the tea in the teapot, pour out the cups and then you know it doesn't have to add any substantial like an extra amount of time into my day. So I might think about how I can turn that into a longer kind of ritual at the altar for that month, but then maybe continue it after that. Uh, and then for October, I have Morrigan devotion, uh, probably with prayer beads. Uh, particularly because October we're leading up to Samhain, we're leading up to my birthday, which is on Samhain, and I just really like the idea of getting back in touch with the Morrigan at that point. I'll be settling into my new life in Dublin, and um, I feel like I could probably do with a bit of Morrigan devotion. I may even pick that up in between now and then, but yeah, particularly in the darker months, I'm, I'm always feeling drawn to her. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I hope that wasn't too kind of swift of a run through, but I really haven't thought it out in any great depth yet. My plan is to maybe make a video at the end of each month and tell you how I found it, how it's gone, uh, share a little bit about what I ended up doing. Did, did I succeed? Did I just kind of fall off the wagon a bit? Did I actually manage to implement this kind of evening routine? And um, hopefully share with you as well, like not only the, the practice at the altar, but also my kind of bibliomancy for want of a better term, kind of practice as well and the journaling and how that's going. And yeah, so I'm really looking forward to giving this a go and I will, yeah, I'll, I'll get back in touch again and let you know how it's been. So if you have any ideas, for uh, what you think I might do for the following six months or more specific things, more specific kind of uh, detail that I can add to these six practices. Do let me know below in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, do you do any of these things as part of your spiritual practice and how do you do it? And you know, what are your experiences? Yeah, let me know all of that. I'd love to hear. And uh, thanks a million for watching uh, and thanks a million for being here and following and, and being interested in my spiritual journey. And um, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will be talking to you about this hopefully pretty soon.